Okay, so here's our glass slide, and you can see the dimple on top of the slide right there. We'll take our solution of microbeads with a pipette. Get a good dose of that there, and just gently squeeze that into the dimple. You don't want to use too much, or else uh, you won't get uh, you'll get flow of the beads as they move through the fluid, and you don't want that. So we then take our cover slip, lay it down, and then gently just push him into place. And then we can soak up the residue. And we're good to go. Just place that on a microscope and take a look at the motion. Okay, so we put our slide into the microscope and adjust the focus of it, and there's our beads. That's all those little tiny dots you see there in the image. Uh, there's some other junk in there. I think it's bits of paper and stuff that I used to wipe off the slide with, uh, but we don't care about that. What we care about are those tiny little dots. Now, right now, we can't really see anything because we're using a very low magnification. If we increase the magnification, by selecting a different objective and readjusting our focus, we'll see, ah, there are our beads, and uh, they're still very small, but we can actually see how we can change the focus and look at different depth levels inside that drop of fluid. Uh, but let's increase the magnification a bit more to actually see some Brownian motion. And there we go. So I adjust my magnification, I can see my little drops and they're all jiggling around. And that jiggling around that you see is Brownian motion. So now your job is to pick a good candidate bead to trace its motion and measure how far it travels in given lengths of time and to do the mathematics that we need. Uh, and it's very important that you choose a good bead. A good bead is going to be one that is isolated, that's not, stuck to uh, neighboring beads uh, that stays within your field of view for the required length of your measurement. Um, also, it has to be a bead that's exhibiting Brownian motion, not flow. We'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, here we have a bead, look there, and you'll see a couple of beads that are actually stuck together. We don't want those. Uh, they're two beads together. We want to look at an individual bead. Um, something more like, say, that guy right there. Another thing to be concerned about is we don't want beads that are stuck. Let's see if we can find an example of that. Uh, yeah, I think that guy right there, um, he, we've now moved the focus to where we're looking at actually the surface of the slide. And what can happen is the bead will actually get stuck to the surface of the slide. And when it's stuck, it's not going to be exhibiting Brownian motion. So we want to make sure we're looking uh, into, in the middle of the fluid column, and that those beads are actually are moving around nicely. And then we'll have a good candidate for measuring uh, the Brownian motion inside the fluid. So look for a single solitary bead that's not stuck to the surface, uh, that's not sitting next to a bunch of junk in there, and follow its motion, and we're good. Okay, now here's an example of a mistake. This slide was not properly prepared so that we're actually getting flow of fluid on the surface of the slide. Hence, we're not getting Brownian motion, we're just getting straight forward, sideways, sideways motion of the beads. You do not want this. If you are seeing this kind of motion, uh, first wait for it to settle down. If it doesn't, you'll need to remount the slide. Uh, we need them jiggling around largely in place. If they're moving in a particular direction, that is not Brownian motion. 